Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today, another sartorial video. Long overdue, I do apologize, but with a horological twist, of course. Now, I must point out, I'm not going to be discussing uh, men's suits in this video, or, or more specifically, the jackets that go with suits. And um, I'm not going to be including any heavier uh, overcoats such as pea coats, um, etc. So I'm just going to be focusing on men's jackets and how to match them with your watch. I must also point out this is very much in my own style and taste. Uh, you know, it would be so boring if we were all the same. I, there's going to be things that I like that you don't and vice versa. Just different strokes and all of the rest of it. But what is important is that we are respectful and uh, open-minded about it. Now it is just about to be springtime here. So in New York as I'm filming this. So a lot of it's going to be very relevant in the next couple of months. But also you can use a lot of these suggestions for autumn now these are not numbered in uh, any order of preference they're just for reference for the sake of compatibility and versatility i am going to be using my rather iconic turtleneck with my jackets but uh, a black plain t-shirt works just as well or corresponding button shirts for some of them so first of all is the classic sport jacket or um, sports coat in American English. These can come in a variety of different materials such as corduroy, suede, denim, leather, tweed, etc. Uh, we'll talk about tweed a little bit later on. They originally started out as uh, shooting and hunting jackets and then morphed into uh, kind of casual smart wear. What I love is the massive variety of styles, fabrics, colors, patterns and also the fact that you don't have to wear uh, corresponding trousers like in a suit. In autumn, I go with more autumnal traditional tweed colors. In terms of brands for sports jackets, I always go with the English brands because, well, it originated there. Um, my favorites are Roderick Charles, Dax, of course, Mark Darcy, Moss, etc. My favorite is this uh, gray hound's tooth with red velvet accents and I've uh, matched it with a pocket square. Now you can take it really far with uh, matching colors. For example, I always have my signet ring. Uh, sometimes I actually take that off and I'll put a corresponding gemstone. I'm a big into gemstones. This is a red garnet. Now, yeah, that is going perhaps a bit too far for <laughs> some of you. Um, my family don't really take too kindly to it. It's more of a mainland European style, I guess. As I mentioned, the, the whole plethora of styles. Uh, this is a, a favorite blue one of mine. To complement the sports jacket, I went with the Dan Henry. It's a watch that very much like the sports jacket, kind of echoes that mixture of um, utility, sporting origins, but also uh, has an elegance. You could just as much wear something like a Speedmaster or a Daytona with this casual smart look. You can really have fun matching it. Uh, here I'm matching it with some suede chucker boots. These are from Thursday boots actually. I've only just tried them so far. I'm not that impressed. These are my English uh, Loke Chelsea boots. I do prefer the English brands when it comes to footwear. And that's the great thing about the sports jacket. It goes with so many different types of footwear. You can even match your belt like I have here. This is a black suede belt and uh, I have a navy one as well. These are very, very affordable. You can get them on Amazon. I'll, I'll, there's, there'll be a link to most of these products in the uh, description below. Again, there are velvet uh, details on the collar, the top of the breast pocket there. Now let's move on to number two. Now this is for more formal events, uh, the classic dinner jacket. Now dinner jackets can vary just as much in the amount of styles and materials from very ornate to just classic uh, Bondian plain white or off-white I should say. My preference is definitely velvet. Velvet is a fascinating material. Velvet weaving originated in the Far East at the beginning of about the 14th century uh, towards the Renaissance. Um, predominantly Italian and Flemish weavers and merchants then kind of took over and it was introduced to Europe. 
In fact, there's a wonderful example here of velvet being used to display the Medici arms. Um, this is from about the 1400s. It was often bought by the more wealthy because of the high cost of dye required to, to color it. It is basically a woven tuft fabric that is cut into threads and then evenly distributed, but some of them short, giving it this very distinctive soft feel and also it's very kind of regal, rich texture and an almost kind of iridescent quality the way it plays with the light. It's absolutely stunning. With the added double vents uh, at the back, similar to the sports jacket for extra comfort, it's perfect for going to the opera or um, seeing a concert or something. If you're a big Wagner fan like me and you have to sit down for, you know, three, four hours, um, you want to be comfortable. So it's often had connotations of of luxury and wealth and it certainly gives that impression footwear you guys know me i love my chukka boots uh, the beauty of a chukka boot is that you can dress them up dress them down i will go with a um, a leather one this time i can't remember if it's jonathan lobs or crockett and jones but it's one of the the two uh, british ones there i'm not a suit and tie kind of guy so this is a great way to kind of get around that and still be comfortable and yet have a degree of elegance. For more formal attire, I will wear a traditional dress watch. Um, I paired it this time with my wife's Cartier tank. I think the blue plays wonderfully with the blued hands and of course the little sapphire cobuchon in the crown. For trousers, I will wear um, Levi corduroys. Uh, it's just the um, corduroy version of my jeans, essentially. Uh, this also has a nice little shimmer and is very, very comfortable. Again, for me, it's about comfort and being black, they don't detract away too much attention from the uh, the jacket, which is really the, the center of attention. Here I've complemented it with a red uh, silk pocket square from um, Fariba Sultani, which is a uh, British Italian designer um, specializing in silks from London. Now this choice is going to certainly uh, ruffle a few feathers. Uh, I have a strong affinity to Stone Island. I absolutely adore the, the quality um, and innovation when it comes to their use of um, materials and design. It's a brand that is certainly going to be divisive. It has unfortunately some negative connotations because it was adopted in the UK by um, certain very devout uh, football supporters, shall we say. These days it's had a bit of a resurgence. So it's a luxury Italian sportswear company started in 1982 by the design lab in uh, Bologna by Massimo Osti. Uh, its roots really lie in industrial design, but it was always at the cutting edge and in terms of its use of materials, uh, which you'll see in a moment in this particular rain jacket, um, and technical fabrics and functional design. Personally, I love the colors they have. This is the Membrana 3 LTC. It's super, super light. Uh, it's a performance fabric and it's made from um, an opaque nylon outer face uh, laminated with a breathable and water resistant membrane protected by a polyester base and it's dyed in this um, extremely dark red it's ah uh, the colors i just love it it has a ton of pockets four on the front two lower and two upper so you can comfortably rest your hands in them i really like the velcro straps on the cuffs this gives you the choice of wearing the watch inside or outside there are toggles to tighten around the waist. And if the uh, compass logo on the side is uh, too much for you, you can always button it on the inside. Personally, I don't give a monkey's what people think. Uh, well, I wouldn't be on YouTube if I did. However, if this is not to your taste and you prefer something a little bit more conservative, less controversial, and more quintessentially British, I would suggest the Barber Wax Jackets. I must admit, I haven't owned one of these since childhood, but speaking to friends of mine who still enjoy the brand, it's still a royal warrant holder, and from what I've seen, of a high standard. I tend to go with a diver or a luxury watch, um, I'm wearing my uh, Breitling Cosmonaut. The Navi Timer has, especially in England, it used to be a bit of a geezer's watch as well. To the rest of the, the world, it's uh, it's synonymous with 
um, aviation and perhaps not the best choice considering the water resistance is rather low on the Navi timer, but typically I'll go with a luxury watch, uh, mainly because I feel the Stone Island is so casual, I, I need to almost kind of up my game a bit on the wrist. I would pair this with uh, jeans, Levi's, I always wear the slim fit, I can't remember if it's 511 or 501. Uh, on the feet, I've recently got back into my Air Max uh, 90s. There's just something about them. You guys know I'm a New Balance guy, but I always desired these in the 90s. A bit of a nostalgia uh, thing, I guess. I could never afford them when I was a little kid, so now, um, you know, they're, they're only about 100 bucks, and they're just super comfortable. Okay, next is the suede jacket. So this is basically just leather with a napped finish. This style of leather originated in France, I believe. Ages wonderfully. This is the American uh, bomber style jacket that has elasticated uh, cuffs, an elasticated collar and waist. Two front pockets, a zip. Uh, I like the American bomber style jacket um, most of all, I mean, you, you can get them in a variety of colors and, and, and different styles, but this particular style evokes, for me, connotations of the 1930s and 40s when suede jackets were really popular, especially in the United States. It's quite an elegant look, but at the same time, very casual. Uh, you can dress it up with trousers or dress it down with jeans. I will typically wear either suede chuckers or in this case, uh, my suede New Balances. Now these are absolutely beat to hell. Typically I'll buy the 997s, which are the made in America versions. In my opinion, they last, well, it's not opinion, it's fact. They, they last four or five times as long as the Chinese made ones for whatever the reason that is. Um, I think it's down to the, the quality of the fabrics and construction. I love the playful colors. The jacket being so kind of subtle and understated, you can add a little bit of flair uh, when it comes to your uh, footwear. Watch-wise with the suede jacket, you can literally wear anything. I decided to go with my Belova Accutron simply because I, I felt like juxtaposing the 1930s classicism with something a little bit more retro, sci-fi and modern, which the Belova Space View Accutron certainly is. Next, we have a quite a similar looking jacket, um, especially in the way you can dress it up and down. Uh, the Harrington jacket. So it was originally known as the Barracuda jacket or the G9. It's a lightweight jacket made of uh, cotton and polyester, wool or suede. The designs often incorporate the traditional uh, Fraser tartan or checkboard pattern lining. They originated in the 1930s in England, but uh, have been adopted by many, many American film stars over the years. It's just too many to mention, uh, but also had a bit of a resurgence in the late 70s, 80s and 90s. A great example of that is the Shane Meadows uh, classic masterpiece of cinema. Uh, this is England where it's worn by predominantly almost every character. Personally I always loved how Stephen McQueen wore his and if you want to go all the way a nice pair of personal luxury Italian sunglasses will complete that look. The great thing about the Harrington is that you can get extremely expensive designer ones or like mine just a cheapo from eBay and Amazon um, they started at as little as 50 bucks continuing that uh, Steve McQueen style he's famous for wearing his uh, Submariner which of course by these days would be a vintage sub to evoke those feelings something vintage inspired but equally masculine and cool I had to go with the Laurier today Okay, next we have the military field jacket. Again, these are very affordable, mainly because they were made in huge quantities to supply, um, well, as the name implies, whole entire divisions of troops. These are all about utility. Now they can come in a variety of different fabrics and styles. Um, probably the most affordable is the uh, M65 classic American field jacket. My one is a uh, Chinese made. It was intended for the, the Russian SWAT team and comes in a variety of different uh, camouflage patterns. It has an interesting pull out section at the back with a reflective fold in flap and was designed also 
with zips at the sides for easy access to sidearms. But what I love about military jackets is the sheer utility of all those pockets. They're great for traveling because you can put your MP3 player, your passport, your documents, all the rest of it in the many zipped pockets. In terms of belts, I dress it down with a fabric adjustable uh, parachute belt. This is actually from the German Fulschkimjäger. Again, functional, comfortable and very, very secure. Footwear, I go again with the Nikes, um, just because it's, it's about comfort, it's not about formality, it's about utility here. And that also dictates the choice of watch. This is a little preview. Um, I'm going to talk about this watch again soon, my custom modded SKX with the Serra coated um, case and even the customized signed crown. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it in more detail later on, stay tuned. This is a coating that uh, originally was intended for firearms so they're non-reflective, thus not giving your uh, position away. And I wear it with a compass. These are just fantastic for basic, basic navigation. I never get lost. Even in New York City, it comes in useful. Uh, again, you can buy them on my store, link below. I think brushed, tool-tastic watches really, really work with military jackets. There's just something about the kind of unpretentious, there to get the job done aesthetic. This did come with a zip on hood uh, unfortunately i've taken it off i can't remember where i've put it now i've probably lost it this is made out of a material called ripstop these are woven fabrics made of uh, nylon using a special reinforced technique that makes them extremely resistant to um, tearing and ripping as you can imagine the perfect material to use for military clothes like this where it has to be about durability and lightness Moving on, here we have the tracksuit jacket. Again, a little bit of a controversial choice. This is not something I would recommend wearing outside casually. The great thing about wearing a tracksuit is they're incredibly comfortable. I only wear this in two instances, when I'm working out or I'm just lounging at home. I love the Adidas tracksuits. Uh, this is the uh, Tyro 17, I think. It has the darker colored triple stripe of the adidas on the sides as opposed to them being white uh, I, I don't particularly want to look like a member of run dmc uh, but at the same time i love the fit of these they're very tight on the legs it's, it's made out of a polyester that is extremely durable breathable and washable uh, because obviously you're gonna wash this a hell of a lot more than your other jackets and because I'm using it essentially as sporting gear in the truest sense this is my G-Shock Mini which I'm about to review very very soon that I got for Christmas I, I just think when it comes to a choice of watch for working out um, nothing's better than a G-Shock I really do okay next is an absolute essential the leather jacket now leather jackets come in so many different styles from the flash heart aviation to very american style biker jackets perfectly uh, demonstrated by the fonds there personally i like the racing jackets not so much the 1950s rocker style but modern racing jackets they just have a, a kind of clean cool look i enjoy having the breast pockets uh, zipped and the high uh, collar to keep you extra warm definitely something for autumn and the colder parts of the spring but despite being a, essentially a racing jacket which will work with you know racing chronographs i still love that connotation to aviation um, so in this case i'm wearing my nth uh, catalina and it is on a distressed collar reb also in leather in terms of footwear i will typically wear my uh, leather chucker boots chelsea's or even trainers um but I, it really depends on the trainers okay next we have the tweed jacket now essentially this is just the sporting jacket like before but in a different material tweed i think everybody should consider tweed it's very similar with the double vents at the, uh, the back the two best tweeds in my opinion is harris tweed which is hand woven as you can see in the outer hebrides this is in scotland being extremely windy and cold up there it's a long tradition you recognize it by seeing the royal orb symbol there they've been making them for centuries and they come in a variety of different patterns and styles it's become a trusted favorite and a kind of benchmark in terms of quality tweed has got quite an old school um, slightly Downton Abbey look about it but um, 
and hence the expression somebody being a bit tweedy. This one is from Moss and is made out of a different type of uh, tweed called Donegal tweed, which is from uh, County Donegal in Ireland. Again, it's a, a tradition from that part of Ireland that goes back centuries. Probably not so renowned as uh, Harris tweed. Extremely high quality, the warmth they give. This is certainly for more the colder parts of spring and autumn. And I went for probably the most traditional pattern and texture uh, in grey. I love grey because it's just such a compatible colour. With tweed, I always wear vintage watches. Here I have um, two examples. My little Lord Sanford there on a purlon. And a new acquisition, which I'm going to be discussing soon, a little world timer from Hamilton on um, a leather strap. Tweed is kind of old school. It's an aesthetic that's just a marriage in heaven. In terms of footwear and trousers, you can really match them with pretty much most. I love to wear jeans. Um, here we have classic British chucker boots. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure these are lobs. And I think the suede works well with the dress down look of the tweed. Last, we have linen jackets. Now, these are obviously for the warmer parts of the year. Linen is a textile made from fibres of the flax plant. It's quite laborious to manufacture. Although the fibre is very strong, it absorbs and dries far faster than the cotton. So hence why it's so valued for their exceptional coolness and freshness in hot and uh, humid weather. Often linen will be in more summertime, lighter colours, although I've gone for a grey. Again, it's in a sports jacket style with the double vents at the back. But as you can see, it works just as well with a turtleneck in the colder part of the year. Then in the summer, I will put a linen white shirt underneath and, and you could be casual smart even in warmer weather. I like the grey because you can really have fun matching it with um, some of my Fariba Sultani silk pocket squares again, as you can see. Even though in the spring and autumn I'll wear chuckers or, or my Chelsea boots, and, but in the summertime uh, you can go sockless with some lovely loafers. In terms of the watch, well, summertime I'm typically wearing divers with a splash of colour and I'll put it on a NATO strap. This is the Admiralty Grey, in keeping with the colour scheme made by Phoenix. As you guys know, they were the first company in history to produce the very first NATO strap. This is actually a mill spec, so rather bond of me. The great thing about a NATO strap is uh, they're a little bit more breathable, they're water resistant, you can wash them, and in warmer conditions, uh, the sweat your body exudes is not going to uh, muck them up like it will a leather strap. And despite its utilitarian uh, military roots, there are, of course, now infinite uh, combinations, colors, etc. So you can really add some customization, uh, a little flair, or um, something more subdued to match your outfit. Although, you know, I might go for a squire even, uh, but divers in summer. Especially, and you can even put them on rubber. It's just the way to go. Anyway, guys, that's about it. Those are my jackets that uh, I think everybody should consider. Please do share your favorite jackets in the comments below. I'd love to hear your suggestions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, stay dapper, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram. Join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.